好像还没有学生来啊
Okay, so can then everyone see my screen? Now, if you, if any one of you cannot see my screen, please, uh, please raise your hand. You can raise your hand here. Or you send a message from Zoom. Or you can just uh, unmute yourself and uh, speak out. Can everyone hear me and uh, see my screen? We only have three students for now, but uh, let's start uh, nevertheless. So let's start. If anyone else is joined, then just uh, continue. We'll just continue about uh, what we're doing here. So this is the, the first lesson uh, in this course, in this for this class for the Python production and also for uh, competitive programming in Python. The, the goal is to, to educate uh, from uh, like a, from uh, almost nothing, no, no nothing in programming to, to prepare yourself to, to get into the competitive programming and the context for, for the BCC and the CCC. And, uh, yeah, that started what's what computer programming. So basically what uh, we are talking, we are teaching here is computer programming, but uh, in the language of Python. And but it's very important to to, to understand the first uh, what uh, what computer programming it is. And the computer programming is basically writing, writing the script for for what computer can do and uh, write and uh, what it can do, what, what, why we learn computer programming is because it, first it's, it's, a, it's a, like a brain gymnastic. It's very interesting. It fosters creativity and the reasoning and uh, it, uh, it articulates your, your, your ability to improve your ability to solving problems. That's very important in, in almost all intellectual activity. And the second thing is that it's very useful it's for nowadays like um, most almost every kind of job requires some kind of uh, programming skills to, to solve problems for scientists of course they need to use the right program to do a numeric calculation and to and for you know, economic economics economics as well so can can anyone uh, everyone everyone mute themselves Yeah, and uh, for the economists as well, they need to do a large, often eco uh, economists they need to do a large quantity of calculations and uh, it's often not very feasible to, to do it by hand. So you also need to write program to do that. And for accountants, for all kinds of business nowadays, you almost for sure you need to, you need to do some programming aspect of it. So no matter what uh, what kind of job you are going to do, that most of jobs are likely to require you to do some computer programming. And the third is the programming itself. Is there are some people you doing programming for life, right? This is the, what they're doing. That we call software software developers, and like that. So and the, that industry in the IT industry, we ca we call it. That that's very uh, prospective and it's fast growing. One of the most fast-growing industry in in the in the recent decades, so it it brings you a very very huge potential like future job opportunity if you know how to do computer programming. So that's why we are do computer programming, and the why we are doing computer teaching computer programming here in this course using Python. And you know, there's a lot of language like C plus plus, like Java. They all have the, in the industry, then often you, it's not only Python, but uh, you have, you have all, all the other language that uh, is used in the software development industry. But why we are teaching Python here as the, the first language you are going to, to learn for computer programming. And why is that? The reason is, yeah, it's the first reason is really easy to learn and really easy to read. 
Yeah, if you compare what uh, what Python looks like and uh, give you a Python program and uh, give you a, a program that written in another language, it would be very, very, very it, for Python, it's much easier to read. It's more like English-like grammar. It doesn't have a lot of like special symbols, for example. In, uh, in almost every other language, you, you have bra mm, braces that uh, almost everywhere you have braces and the brackets and uh, everywhere you need to do those to eliminate uh, a block of the code. But in Python, it's using the indentation to, to eliminate the, the block of code. So it's much easier to, to read on ice and often it doesn't have these special dollar signs and the hashes and like that. And the second thing is it's popular. Other than Java, I think Python is the, the most popular language for now that's online. And it's, it's, it's even still growing. It's the, 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 the people using Python, the, the population of people using Python is still growing. So it's very popular. What popular, why popular is important here is because once it's popular, there are more people use it. And then once you have any problem and then, that means you have a large community that you can discuss with. And you, if you have any problem, it's much easier to get help online. For example, if you have a Python, uh, Python problem, uh, you, you, you have problem, you're writing, writing pro program in Python. When you search that information online, it would be like very easy in Stack Overflow, for example. In, and search it in Google, it will be very easy to find an answer because in, most likely, if you run into this problem, and uh, there are a lot of people using it, and most likely someone else already ran into that problem before. So uh, it would be very easy for you to to just uh, search the question, and uh, someone else has already asked it for you, and uh, someone or someone else has already answered it for you. It's very easy for you to 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 find out the uh, to solve your find out the answer of it. And the third thing is with the large popul population, with the many people using it and uh, many areas also using it, and it means that uh, it's used everywhere. More people using it means it's used everywhere and more, for example, in scientific computing, that's one of the strongest uh, area application for Python. And that's what uh, we are going to teach <coughs> in this course for, for scientific computing. So, of course, and uh, also in web development, we are using it a lot. For example, YouTube. Did you hear? Did you guys hear, hear using YouTube every day? Right, almost everyone using YouTube every day. And YouTube is written in Python. So the and the at least the back end of YouTube is all written in Python. So that web the web development is a huge. A lot of websites are written in Python. So that's one of the reason. If you know Python, you know how YouTube works. And you can develop something like YouTube. That's it. And for scripting as well. And uh, for Python is a very like very good language for scripting because it's it's very short. The normally the program the size of program is short and very quick to very easy and quick to write something out and uh, run it. And for for common scripting tasks like uh, system administration and uh, for, for for some uh, QA or automation job, then for scripting and it's very easy and easy to write the auto scrapers to collect the data for data engineering. Also, it's very and it's uh, it's, uh, it's got a very wide usage in also in that area for data engineer to collecting data from different sources and uh, put them into things. And uh, once you collect uh, a lot of data, then you can do do the computing on it. Also use Python that use one language to, to do everything almost like. So that's why we choose Python that you, when you learn it, you can do a lot of things with it. And so uh, let's uh, dive a little bit about uh, if you if you run into problems, if you cannot follow this course, if you I tell, um, normally you should uh, do everything that, uh, that I do here. If I type something, I, I show you and show you anything and I type it. In, in the Python shell or ripple or anything and in the idle in, in, on the screen, you should do it uh, yourself on your computer as well. Uh, if you are not following that, then it's 
it will be very hard to follow up. So I, I ideally you should do everything I do here. I do on the screen in your in your computer as well. So if you cannot uh, cannot follow me, cannot do what I do here, then you you should uh, let me know. And uh, for example, you you should type it. And uh, you should type something here, or you can you can unmute yourself and uh, speak out, or raise your hand, and let me know. And after that, uh, I will um, tell me what you are running into and uh, what you cannot do here, and uh, I will try to try to and uh, give me the control of the thing. I can you can share your screen first, and from share uh, while sharing your screen, you can give the control to me, and then I can solve it. Uh, for you, if you you guys really cannot solve it, maybe if you just sharing your screen, I can see what's wrong here and what's wrong in your in your screen and in your computer, and uh, I can tell you what to do to to solve it. But uh, if anything goes anything for any reason that you cannot follow what I'm typing, then you use this. You share your screen first, and you give the remote control to me, and uh, I will solve this. Yeah, I uh, everyone got some Python. I will uh, in the uh, in a few minutes. I will show you guys how to install Python. So don't no worry about that. So let's show you how to install Python. And first, you need to go to this python.org. The official website is everyone. I think everyone has the internet connection, right? So be able to go do this and the next thing is download the download here and depends on your operating system if you are windows go to windows if you're on mac don't go to mac if you're on anything else you can tell me and i can show you what you should go to for example if for now you go to windows and after you go to windows you should uh, select download the executable installer here the executable installer, this one, not the web-based or embeddable, just the executable installer. Normally, it should be the 64-bit, but if, even if you download the, this one, it's fine. Either this executable installer or this one, both are fine. Just download it and run it. For now, I already installed it here, so I won't uh, click it. But uh, once you click it, you should see this screen. And uh, as everyone has everyone for for those uh, for those of you guys haven't installed Python, you guys should do it now right now to install Python. So let me know if you guys if any one of you have not installed Python and uh, you guys cannot get into the screen. And install you click install now. Yeah. Is everyone uh, has everyone in, it's not working? What's not working, Aria? Ariana? You can speak out if you can unmute yourself if you want. Or you don't have a mic, you can type it here. Um I have a mic. It's just I uh, can't um like it's weird for me. Well, uh, okay, can you go to this website, the yes. python.org? Yes, and uh, go to well, what operating system you're using? I'm using Windows. Yeah, so click Windows here, Downloads, and Windows. Um, uh, let me, I'm going to restart. Okay, so you click Download? Yeah, Download and Windows. And then Windows, but... Yeah. For me, there's only like a link to something called the embedded distribution. There's no executable installer? No. Hmm. Download Windows. All right, make sure that uh, you are going to this URL. If you click into this, what happens? Oh, okay, now it's, I got it. Yeah, so, so just download the executable installer. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. 
And uh, everyone who has not installed Python has not skipped into this screen. And uh, click install now after it's downloaded. And you should see this screen. And after the, the progress bar finished, don't click cancel here. Once it's finished, you should uh, see this setup that was successful here. Uh, has everyone finished? If you haven't done it. Um, you should uh, install Python 3 actually. Install Python 3 because that's what uh, we are teaching here. We are, we are using Python 3 grammar here. You should uh, download the Python 3 and uh, it should ask you to uninstall or or upgrade it to Python 3. Yes, it's 3371, yes. Alina, are you installing Python 3 now? Or are you have a problem upgrading your Python 2 to 3? And if anyone, okay. If everyone, uh, if, and, um, everyone I, sh I need you guys to tell me whether you have installed it. If once you have done, just a message here that you have done it. Either you have done it uh, before the class or you you're, you're done it now. Once you've done it, let me know. Okay, good job. Yeah, let's wait other other guys. Okay, two, three. So we have three out of three. For those of you who have already installed it, can can get yourself started. Start with the IDL, I-D-L-E here. Get yourself a little bit familiar with the interface. We will go through it later, but uh, if you guys already installed it, finished, then you can start quicker. Can you see it in the start menu? Here. If you click start, you see Python 3.7 and uh, in idle, you should have idle in it. Yeah. Okay, so we have uh, four. Five. Five guys. I think the only one missing. Ariana, are you done installing the Python three? Okay, yeah, so we have everyone installed. Now let's let's start the idle. Idle means it's a it's an acronym for integrated development and the learning environment. That's what uh, what we will use in this course for to show how to program in Python. It's very interactive, so it's easier for beginners and for learners. Very easy to use. To start it, you click start and uh, you find Python 3.7 and you click idle. And after that, you should see a window like this. Can everyone open it? 
and I open in mine here, it should look like this. From now on, it's required, but uh, we won't use any, it won't make any difference in our course. You guys should you should see 3.71. Can everyone open idle? If you cannot open idle, please let me know. Everyone, everyone good to go? Okay, everyone. Yeah, let me go. Let me know if you guys have opened it. Just uh, type here. It's working. Okay. We have two, Aaron and Ariana. Okay. Okay. Four. Okay. So the last guy. Alice, Alice, have you opened it? Okay, so we have everyone. And get yourself familiar with this interface first. Try a few things. Let's get yourself this thing. The prompt, this is called a prompt. This Basically, this means you need to type something. You can type anything here, although not all of it well, well recognized. So it's going to be here, copyright, type copyright. It will show you this thing, basically no use. And license, no use. Yeah, but uh, these are the thing. And um, you can type anything. Like if you type anything that they cannot recognize, it will tell you what goes wrong. Name X is not defined, that's it. And uh, basically this, it's called a prompt, the, the arrow means you need to type something. So it's waiting for you to enter anything. And the second thing that uh, we are use mostly useful is print anything that you will need to. There are two ways to print something in, in the idle, but uh, once you, you move it, move things from idle to a, to a program file, you will, there will only one, one way for you to print it. For now, you can print anything just to type by typing it out. Just by typing it out, it will show you. And uh, the other way is print. This is a function that uh, will print whatever you put in a bracket. This thing is important when you write a program. In the, in the shell, this is called Python shell. We also call it idle at the same time, but uh, in the shell, it's, it's, it's the same as, you, as if you type type one. If you print one and you type one, it's the same. It will give you one. But in the program, only these print will be printed out. So remember this. If you want to check the value of anything, print it out. Now that we do can do something simple calculations. Try some simple calculation on it. For example, you can do anything you can think it of. One plus one, two plus two. We will we will go over the the operators later. Not all the operators that you think in math is the the same way works the same way in Python, but uh, most of them will. Like uh, at least plus and minus, these things are the working the exact same way in Python and in math. So you guys should uh, get yourself type something, try something. And let me know if, if there's anything wrong. But if, if you see this, basically trace back and uh, followed by an error, it means there's, there's something wrong in your input. Yeah, and uh, aside from typing things in shell, in shell it's very interactive, but uh, you also know there's the limit, right? You can only type one line here, only one line, and you get the, the result right back. It's very easy to get feedback, but uh, it's hard for you to write out the long line. If you want to write a long program, 
like very long statement and things, very long expression, for example. Very doing complex things here, it would, would not be feasible to do that because you can only type one line at a time. And in order to type multiple lines, you need to you need to write a program. What's the program? So what is program? It's a sequence of instructions. So here you only have one. One of them is one instruction. This is one instruction, and every basically in the shell, in the prompt, you type one instruction at a time. And for in a program, you have a sequence of them. So you have them one after another. Let's let's create a, the program file. Normally, we we put .py at the end of the file to indicate that the, this is a Python program file. Like file, you, you can go to file and new file, file and new file here, and then you will get another window. Can everyone open another window through this? The file and new file, or you can you can also press Control plus N as well. File and new file, you can open a new window, and in this window, you can write multiple lines, and you can save it at the same time. That's the program, what we call. Yeah, if anyone cannot open this window or follow me, that's what I'm typing here, then yeah, please let me know. Uh, file, new file inside the shell, and you get another window. This window is, for now it's untitled, but uh, once you save it, you can save it. If you click inside this file window, you click file and save, then you can save it to somewhere. So then my first program, .py. Save it as this name. Save it. You can save the file. It's the file editor window, which is this one, and the file and the save. File save or control S. And you can run the program. First, it's empty here. Let's let's type, type something. Remember that uh, I said that uh, if you just type an expression here, it won't do anything. For example, let's try it. If you just type one here. And you save it, file, save, and you run. How do you run it? It's inside of the, the file editor. You have in the menu, you have run, and the run, you have run module. This file is called a module at the same time because each, each Python file corresponds to a module. For now, you don't need to, to think about too hard, but uh, just uh, remember if you want to run this file, you just uh, Click run and run module, and it won't show anything. It just uh, show okay. I have run this program, and it doesn't show you any output because you are just putting expression here, and it's just sitting there doing nothing. And in order to to for the program to show you something, you need to print it out. For example, you print one, and you save it. And when you run it, you will see one here. Can everyone follow this? Yeah, if you guys cannot, uh, anyone cannot uh, follow these, what I'm typing here, then let me know. Either I'm typing too fast, I'm moving too fast, or either you have some prob problem that running it. Is everyone following? Let me know. Did you guys uh, see? Yeah. If anyone that if I'm moving too fast or yeah, I I got to know that uh, what the pace of your guys. Good, Jacqueline. Are you following? And then Ariana. Oh 
the following. Okay, so everyone following, good. So you guys can can see that if you do anything here, the the you can you and you run it, you'll see it here. And you can one purpose of the program is there are multiple options. It's a sequence of commands. So you save it, you run it, and you see these. It's run in a sequence. And one of the things that we will do for for every time we learn a new language, for example, it's the hollow world, more like a ceremony that whenever we start uh, learning something new in, in, in programming. Hello world. So this will be, this is like a ceremony that we'll do for every new thing we learn in programming. It's hello world. This is the hello world program so-called in Python. It's only one line so to show that how, how Python, how Python is simple, so simple. Okay. Oh. Ariana, what do you mean the launch chat? If you guys are not following me, let me know. Yeah. Okay. So, so that that's the, the Hello World program, so called. If you write this in other language, for example, in Java, you need at least like five lines or like at least five lines. But in Python, you just need one line that show how, how succinct, succinct and uh, precise, concise Python is and easy to learn, easy to start. If you run it, you will see this Hello World here. Actually, why when you quote it, it it means a string. We will discuss it uh, in later, in later in the course. But uh, this is a, like a ceremony. You guys should do it now, if you haven't do it. Okay. Like uh, um, before we start, uh, continue. Before we continue, I need to tell you something about uh, how your programming is. Sometimes it's very frustrating and this because if you type anything wrong make any small mistakes here for example you make a typo and you run it then you get something you get some error and if imagine that you have a hundred line here and uh, you make a small mistake and you yeah it's, it's very frustrating for you to 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 find where the error is and uh, solve it in this case, it's easy. It tells you where it is, but uh, in some case, that the the the, the interpreter here, that the pro the shell is not smart enough to tell you where it goes wrong, and you need to find out yourself. So it's very frustrating sometimes, but uh, it's also fun at the same time because it's like solving a puzzle that you need to try different ways. Think uh, think think it hard. Think about it hard. And uh, try to find out uh, what's what, what follows what, and uh, solve it. So you need to, guys need to be a little bit uh, tough in mind to prepare to, to to do programming. That's one thing you need to keep in mind. And uh, yeah. also, everyone makes mistakes, and it's it's very super normal to make mistakes. You will see this red thing like all the time, even even in our day, you know, for for like professional programmers. We see this every day, so it's it's normal to see this. That that doesn't mean that uh, you you are fail you failed at something. It just means that uh, some small things need to be corrected. That's it. So don't don't be afraid to see these things. Don't be panic when you see this and uh, read into it and see what it says and uh, try to fix it based on this information. And do by doing this repeatedly, you will learn from it. Yeah, and you will you will be a better programmer uh, over the time. That's the that's the point of programming. And practice, practice, practice. That's that's the key of doing almost anything. Actually, almost learning anything, you need to practice a lot. We I will provide the uh, exercise in the class, and uh, if you guys feel it's not enough, you guys can can find online. There is a lot re lot of resource for for computer for learning programming. There. And especially like for language like uh, popular as popular as Python, 
it's very easy because you can find a lot of exercise online. But if you feel you're not uh, familiar enough or you need more practice, you can always find more online. And if you, and you can ask the IELTS ask me if you guys want more, more exercise as well. And I can provide more in the class. I will provide some in the class. Later we'll do it together. Yeah. And uh, don't forget about this. Just to do the exercise. And I will have assignments for you for after each each class, after each class each week. You guys, you need to do it. Uh, mostly it's programming. For each each problem, you you need to write a program here and save it to a file. And uh, you need you, you guys need to upload it to Google Class. So for each program, uh, for each problem, you need to upload it to Google Class, save it in a file. Most like most file is uh, most problem is is program program. So programming uh, problem. So just do it and uh, submit, and uh, we will discuss. I, I will see you, see you, and uh, review your assignment and uh, uh, if. Many of the, you guys do it wrong, and maybe we need to discuss it uh, in the next class. That uh, wh why most guys doing it wrong and how we do it right, and uh, maybe we will enhance and do some enhancement for for those topics that uh, it seems everyone that uh, is prone to uh, prone to do do it wrong do it. So let's start uh, about uh, doing something, learn something in Python. It's Operators and expressions. That's one basic, very basic uh, bricks building blocks in Python. It's operators and expressions. What is that expression? It's mathematic expression. Of course, it's an expression. Mostly, we'll we'll get into it. Eight plus three point five seven. You guys can try it in the shell here because it's just one line. It's much easier to type it out and uh, see the result right away. So you guys should all should try it. Okay, uh, you, um, you are asking for the Google Class code, right? So the Google Class is here. I think uh, we, I invite everyone, but uh, yeah, I think you missed that email. So the class code here is, Class code. What's the class code here? Okay, the class code is this. So I'll type it out. Yeah, it's this. So after the after the class, you you guys all should go to the Google Class, and the the class work here. You should see the assignment. I will I will release this after the class. And it's due the 24 hours before next class, which is the 26th Friday before 2 p.m. You guys should uh, submit it before that. Otherwise, I, I won't have enough time to review it and uh, see if how, how you guys doing before next class. So. Yeah, let's continue here. And also this plus, is a operator. Operator here is a plus, and the expression is eight plus three point five seven here. Also, minus is also an operator, so we can do it like this. Basically, these are the exact the same as we have in math, so it's not uh, something too complicated. Here we have something that times eight times three point five seven, but we if we do it here, that won't work. Syntax error. And uh, it basically it tells you it's something wrong here. But, uh, what's the correct way to do it? If you use times, it's using star. That's almost true for, for every programming language if you have exposure to other programming language, that uh, you're using star as, uh, as the operator for time in, in math. So you can get the right answer here, 28.56. Yeah, it's fine that uh, on Friday at 2 p.m., then you just be doing the homework before that, right? Yeah, it's not class, you have class. That's, our class is a Saturday, 2 p.m. Yeah. 
Yeah, just be doing before that. The submit before that. It's not like uh, you submit on that time. And uh, divide. Wait, divide. Of course, this guy you you can't even find it on keyboard now. So it's, of course, there need to be something else that's divided. That's using a slash to indicate a divide. We just uh, try it here. Here, and don't don't type it wrong as a backslash. You need to differentiate between what is a forward slash and backslash, and don't don't confuse one with each other. Here, yeah. it's it's the forward slash that you have to use to for the divide. And uh, let's do something simple math like a. Uh, if we have ten dollar every day, and uh, for for a year, how much would we get? And of course, you guys can 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 calculate it by heart. But yeah, let's do it here. That's right. That's of course it's right. And the D thing as well. With three and five, fifty two weeks. That's it. One hundred and four fifty six. And. Uh, we have a thousand something that we have to do every week. How much we do for every week is that. So can everyone following up? Yeah, and uh, we do something a little bit uh, harder. That's the two powered for two, three, which should be two times two times two times three times, so it's eight. How do we do this in Python? So what you do is you use two stars to indicate this operation, the power operation. So you get eight here. It's two power to three. It's eight. So now, now we have some basic operations. It's addition, the subtraction, and the multiplication division and exponentiation and now explanation um, you guys should uh, remember this table if you haven't I believe it it should be quite easy for you guys to remember this now it's the order of operation that's not the, the basically it's the same as in on as in math when you see this expression how do you see um it's not uh, like we do plus first uh, 5 plus 30 and then times 20 right when we see this operation we should do it in math like we we do in the times first it's 30 times 20 and 600 then we plus 5 is 605 so how it does in python Let's try it. Just try it. Well, I'll see how it do. Okay, you, Alina, you asked this. The hat, the hat in Python, it's not you. I think that it should do the. It, that doesn't do the same thing as as power. It's not power. The hat actually actually it's exclusive or bitwise or. That uh, it's another operation that we we will introduce later. But uh, to do power, you do star star. So that's the difference. If you do two hat three, it's one. It's not the power. So it's not hat, unfortunately. But it's also true for in Java and the C plus plus. In Java and the C, it's hat is for exclusive or. What exclusive or does is basically. It takes the binary form of each thing. You have one zero in the binary form and one one. And the exclusive for or will do, if it's different, then it put one in this bit. And if it's the same, it will be zero in this, in this bit. So basically the result is zero, the binary form is zero one. So it gives you the, give the result of one. So the binary of one is one. That's it. So we will talk. We will go back to the bit bitwise operation, something like hat, like exclusive or this thing later. But for now, it's the the power is star star. Just remember that.
Yeah. Now we do this, this order of operations. The time comes before plus. Is that true in Python? You can try it. Yes, it's true. Otherwise, it should be something different, like how, how we do this before. If we want to do plus before time, can we put brackets here? You would see 35 times 20 is 700. So Python is quite smart to, to figure out the, the precedence the same way as we do in math. So the thing you have six seven hundred if you put bracket. And uh, for the power, what does it do? In math, the power takes precedence over the time. So you do the power first. You do get this twenty power to two, two and it's four hundred. Four hundred times thirty five. It's 14,000. Let's try it in Python. It's 14,000. So the power is uh, take over precedence over the time and which takes precedence over plus and minus time and, and divide as well. If you want to take uh, take these the time first, then you need to put brackets, which is a very large number. Okay, so we summarize the the precedence, the operator precedence here, which is the the, uh, the power will come first, and uh, times and divide, and plus and the minus. So one of the the other thing, if we just do do things like this, then it's no more than a, a fancy. I don't won't even see it as a fancy. It's just a normal calculator. If we just do do mathematic expressions here, but uh, now we are going to learn some more powerful structures that uh, we are going to use. Make a programming different than just calculators. It's a variable. What the variable is? The variable is the first. The variable is a name. You give it's a name that you can use to, to indicate almost anything that you want to refer to. It's some value. And uh, it's a name. At the same time, that name represented for a computer. For you, it's a name. For a computer, it's address in memory. So it's for, for computer, it's also it's a place to store the value. So for you, it's a name. And this also, in the same time, it's, it's a place that you put the value in it. Then you indicate it in as a something. So what can we do with variables? First, we we do declaration, and the, which means the, what declaration means is give the name of the variable. I say okay, x is a variable, and the, in other languages you use you also need to give out the, in some other languages like the so-called the so-called the type language. Python is an untyped language, which means variables in a program, you don't give explicit type to the variables. And the variables don't, don't keep type information with it. But in some language, each, each variable has a specific type and you can't assign say, something else with some other type to it. But in Python, you can variable, only value has type and the variable doesn't keep type. So you don't need to give that information. That's, uh, that's all the need declaration time. And the initialization means give the initial value to a variable. I mean, put something into, give some, let that, that name refer to something or put some value inside that address to computer. And assignment means give it the value again. I mean, it's it's a uh, initialization is a special case of assignment that uh, when you gave it the first time, but uh, some language doing declaration and initialization at the same time include the Python. So what you are do is just uh, doing this at the same time, and the assignment is give a new value to it. And also you can do delete it to remove that variable. It uh, no longer takes up memory because. In a computer, you have limited the amount of memory that you can use. If you keep uh, keep assigning, keep keep declaring different variables and never delete it, and your program 
runs forever, then yeah, you, you will run out of memory at some point. So you need to delete it if you, you plan to have a, a long running program, so things like that. Yeah. Then how do we do this operation, like specifically in Python? Yeah. So assign value to a label that's x equals 42. This at the same time is doing the declaration, say x, I declare x as the name of a rival, and I assign value 42 to x. So you can try out here. It won't give you anything, but uh, if you want to see the value of x, then just type x here, it will be 42. And uh, in a program, you can also do the same thing. But as I said before, if you just type x here, you won't get anything. If you run this, no, it's the, just the, don't print it out. In a program, you need print, print x, which will give, print out the value of x on the screen. So run it, 42. Now from now on, when I, whenever I run, I just press F5. You guys can also do it as well, it's much faster. You don't need to click and click. Just press F5, you can see x equal 45, uh, 42 here. So that's assignment and uh, also initialization, also declaration, they are all done with the uh, equal sign and the value can be changed. Once you assignment to a value and you can assign, put a, some other value to that, uh, to that address, to that uh, location or assign to that name, whichever form you are more familiar with. Okay. Now it's, it's a different value now. The same thing here, if you do this, you will see the two different values at a different time. It will have different value in this in this location x. Now delete a variable. It means delete x. And using del, that's a special operator key. Reserve the word that the Python use for delete a variable. You just del x, and x will no longer visible here. If you want to the value, it will say name error that the x name x is not defined. That means that uh, x is not a variable defined anywhere. So uh, one thing I need, well, we will come back to this to give a meaningful name to your variables. This is very important in in real life programming because yeah, this uh, the program it's a sequence of it's construction to computer, but uh, at the same time, there will be will be other pro other people, and uh, you will also read your own program, like uh, several months later and even years later. And at that time, if you give meaningful name to a variable, it will be much easier to figure out what uh, what you were thinking about uh, while you run this program, right? While you, while you wrote those programs, and uh, to fix it or to improve it or it's easier for other people to figure out what you are thinking for these programs and for easier for them to maintain and uh, change the code. So give meaningful name to your variables. We will discuss the principle of it uh, later, but uh, I will mention it now. So let's do some exercise, Ex for example. Yeah, do you guys, uh, yeah, and uh, let's do some exercise. X equal ten. Then basically you have a you have a memory. Imagine this is in computer memory that uh, you have a table that uh, X is the address of it. Norm in the real life it's a number, but uh, it would be easier for you to imagine it's X. X will when you when it, when the Python interpret interpret it will translate to a number that uh, every time it's the X it will it will use that number as the address number that uh, used to, to save that value of whatever you assign to X. Now uh, you have X and you have ten inside of it. And if I do this, what would happen? Of course, it's a, it's a change of value, so but uh, it change the same value to x. So it uh, will put 20 into the same location as x was before. So I'll replace what's in it. So it, it will be 20. 
Now you have y equals x. Remember that. Uh, so what 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 would y be? So remember that the uh, x is now 20. So y will be assigned the same value. Remember that the assign only assign value. So it will be the value of 20. So y also will be 20. Let's try it here in the red book. Actually, let's try the program here. 20 print x y. Note that uh, you can put the comma separated a list of different things that uh, to print it out. It will also do it for you. So basically, it will print it out, print them out, to space, uh, separate by space. So now you can see x is 20 and y also 20, which is the value that we assign to x. So you can see it here. Now, now we reassign x to 30. What will happen after it? Let's do it here. Will the uh, will the value of y also change, or will the value of y stay the same? Of course, x will be 30 now, but the uh, y, let's see it. But y doesn't change. Still 20. So y is assigned by the value, not not uh, a, a reference to x, but a reference to refer to the actual value, never refer to actually x. Let's do it again. Never refer to the to the new value of x. So remember, once you assign it, it, it becomes a value. And uh, no matter how you change this guy later, it won't change the, this guy, the y you already assigned, unless you change this guy at the same time. So remember that. That's how, how variable works in Python. It's much simpler than, than C++, actually, if you guys have exposure to that. So you have 30, and you have y still at 20. Now you have theta. Theta is y plus 5. You can put the y plus 5 here as expression. Now you have y, x, and the y. Once you load it to run it, you can use all the variables in your shell. So x is 20, 30, y is 20. And you can use them to compose expressions instead of uh, some real numbers. You can use variables now in place of their number. For example, x plus 1 is 31. It's the equal as, it's the same as what we use like this because x the net value of x now is 30 so 30 plus 1 is it's all 31 so what do you when you're doing thing, this thing it's the same as you are doing this thing so you can even have multiple of them like this plus y is 50. so when do we so when when we assign the value of theta to y plus 5 what will it be Let me try it. So it should be the value of y, which is the value of x, and which is the value, which is 20, and 20 plus 5. It should, should be 25. So yeah, it's the same thing. 25. Now you see it. Now the address has three variables now. And the next thing is a little bit tricky. You can do this thing is to assign a variable to, to change the variable, but the, on the right-hand side, you can have the reference to that variable itself. So in order for this to work, this guy has to have, this guy need to have an old value. So what the old value here? The, the old value will be used in the calculation of the right-hand side. It basically will take the old value, calculate the value on the right hand side, and assign to the left side, left hand side. So let's try it. If we do this, it will be 31 because it's uh, x at this point is 30. 
and then plus sine 30 plus 1, which is 31. So the right-hand side is 31, as sine to x. So it's 31 now. Yeah, you guys should try this yourself, or you can you guys can try something more. Yeah, I'll give you guys uh, five to uh, ten minutes for a break and to take some rest, or you guys can try different things like assign variables and uh, printout or operations in Python and run it. You guys are gonna do them. Do it. Give you guys a uh, ten minute break. Yeah, I'll set that aside, but uh, you, if you have guys have question, you can you can also I'll I'll watch the watch this uh, group chat. If you have guys have question, you can also ask in the group chat. Yeah. So I'll come back. We'll start the lesson at the three ten.
Okay, so we are back. Let me share my screen. Yeah, so let's continue. Oh, okay, guys, back line. So, so let's go to let's project one. Okay. Yes, guys. Ariana Dina Dylan. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, uh, yeah. So let's continue. For x plus x x equal plus equal uh, x equal x x plus one because before it was thirty, now it becomes thirty one. So now the last one that if we delete y in this case, what happens? Mm, maybe we should uh, choose one of you guys. Uh, if anyone wants to answer this, if I delete y based on these, what will well, what will this Remember, it looks like after that. Mm -hmm. Delete uh, theta? No, and here I delete y. I'm not deleting theta. And anyone answer, Elena? Yeah, you can unmute yourself and uh, speak if you want. No, it will change because I delete something in the memory. And uh, as you see, if I have X here, and if I delete X, and X will no longer in the memory. The name X is not no longer fine. And before it, uh, we have X, Y, and the theta three things here. And if I delete Y, what will happen? Mm, well, well, if I just delete Y and the uh, I I won't get error, right? You see, if I have X and if I delete X, and nothing will happen. And only after that, I I want to get the value of X that you it will complain about the X is not defined because I deleted it here. Yeah, what's twenty? Yeah, that's that's almost there. Yeah, that's right. Nothing represents twenty. The the Y is no longer there, so it's only we have only x and theta, and we don't have y anymore. So that in the memory you have only x thirty one and theta equal twenty five. That's it. Yeah, good. Yeah, and uh, now we are we are going to talking about the uh, uh, naming variables. The naming of variables, the principle of how to choose a good name for your variable. It's the one common error is. Choosing it too too general and too short. Uh, that's what uh, I'm doing here. Because do what do you guys think X is a variable name? It's kind of too general, right? It's, it's also too short. In in the real life use case, that uh, almost you you won't use X unless you're doing some math. But uh, in the in the real life you know, use case, you will you will use something more meaningful that. Uh, Repent, uh, using the domain of the prob pro problem, for example, the length of something or the amount of something that uh, instead of just X. So X here, it might not be a good name for a specific pro uh, problem. So X is, is not a good name. It's too general, it's too short. And uh, the second mistake is using Python keywords. There's a list of keywords that uh, you cannot use to name your variables. For example, print. Print, you cannot use the name, name your variable. If you assign print to something else, oh, that, that's wrong here, then, yeah, then you cannot print anything anymore if you assign it. 
for example, if is a keyword here. So if you put this thing, you try to use that if as a variable name, you will get syntax error because this is reserved the keyword for Python. You cannot use it for, for variable. And even print is not the reserve. Better not using it because it will override the definition of of print and you can you you can no longer use print function anymore. And because of that, I have to I have to restart this guy. I have to restart show because I I break it break the definition of of print. So now you can print print the thing again. So that's it. Yes, of course, that's what I did. You 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 asked me to delete print, right? Okay, no. Okay. So what print here? Print is a built-in function, so you cannot print you cannot delete the print as a built-in function, but you can override the definition of it. Now print is forty two. But you cannot when you try to print something, you cannot print it anymore. Because it's it's an integer now. It's no no longer a built-in function. Building function you cannot delete it, but you, now you can delete it and uh, print it. Oh, okay. So if you delete, you, <clears throat> you can delete the definition of of what you define yourself, but you cannot delete the definition of a building function. So once you delete that. Uh, that the, that the override, the one that shadows the definition of, of print, then you will get the, the original definition of it again. Yeah, that's quite smart. Maybe you know how to, how to you do know Python before? So, so, the, so that uh, you know how, uh, you know, delete that those thing will, will reveal the, the built-in function, the built-in definition of it. So let's continue. That's it. But if you cannot even assign to it anymore, and the delete as well, these are keywords. These are keywords so that you cannot assign to it. So if you, so one one way to to tell if it's a keyword, uh, if a, if a keyword is in idle, if you see this as yellow or orange, whatever the some color like very bright color if you type that out it show you a very bright color here and this here as well show this color these are keywords you cannot use these things these are all keywords and if you see this color it probably means a built-in function and better not override definition of it otherwise you you will get very weird error for example if you you thing you don't you don't override it basically and these are keywords these color later i will give you uh, give you the link to the list of keywords you can look it up online and better you don't need to remember all of them just uh, just uh, just uh, know where to look up when you need it and uh, Another mistake is uh, giving the name variable name is too long of a name of variable. That will be very awkward to use. For example, this the amount of money I get paid each month that I work at this job, and that's that's way too long. That uh, well, almost it's very hard to 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 read the code if you using this using that long using that as a variable name. That will especially if it's appears repeatedly somewhere. So you need to get that, give it a good name. Good name, a good name is descriptive at the same time, but uh, I need to be succinct. Uh, succinct. The better has like uh, only uh, seven to eight, seven to eight characters. It's not the hard rule, but uh, better to have um, no more than eight characters. Make it, uh, make it short, make it one word, make it short. And, but uh, at the same time, describe what what saved in it. So can you guys uh, try to find out the name for for this super long name? Find out the correct name for this super long uh, variable. 
uh, no, you cannot use space. So whenever we want a space in a variable name, you use underscore. For Python, it's a, it's a convention to use underscore in place of space in variable name. If you use space, it will, will show, it will recognize as two different things if you use something like that. So you can only have X, Y. For now, it's not defined, so let's say it here. Let's say dev var equals one. And if you use this, it will give you a syntax error because it's a to you cannot, basically you cannot use space because it will recognize as two different things and it will give you error. So you need to put underscore between them. Yeah, so can you guys think about a, a short name, a more descriptive but shorter name for this? This super long variable name. Yeah, mm, good. So that's the thing. It's a salary that uh, will be a good name for that. So let's give you the link. You can find it, the Python reference. If you have, for now, you are not going to use it a lot, but uh, later in in, in this course, you will look up your documentation. When you look up your documentation and things like that, you can use Python reference. If you Google Python reference, you'll get this. But remember, we are using Python 3, so change the version here to 3.7, and you have the language reference, and you have identifier and a keyword, and all the keywords are here and here. These are the things that you Basically, you you never you you cannot use that as, as a variable name, and you can also look at look up the the built-in functions that you you better not use as as variable name. These are the built-in functions that you better never use. You 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 won't use you can use them by mistake, but the, better not use them so these are the two things that's not better not use as a variable name and here i give you a link for it do not use keyword and uh, the rule is to use lowercase letters it's not a harder rule but uh, you use you can use um, uppercase but the better in real life projects in the project that uh, later we will do in this course or or any assignment, better use lower lowercase letters separated by underscore. Um, my variable, things like that, do not use. Uppercase is reserved for values that are not changed. The uh, constant, so we call it. Constant in Python is not special as those in other languages because the Python basics don't don't intrinsically like tell difference between something that can be changed. Basically, everything can be changed in Python. But the, but the, if for for readers, it's better to use uppercase to indicate it's a constant that the, that will never change. For example, this thing we equals seven. You can use, you should use constant here, and then you can use it. Uh, Later in the calculation, for example, time 42, then you repeat, get the number of days in 42 weeks, which is this. And the, the, the uppercase indicates uh, this guy will probably never get changed. But uh, you can change it by mistake, of course, but never do that. It's just a it's the indication of tell someone else, tell your colleague, tell your co like group mem group team team members, don't change it. If you do you you can change it, but you, you shouldn't. Yeah. So let's do some exercise, go through some examples. For for now, yeah, let's see. Here is the formula for distance. For, for a fixed uh, initial velocity and uh, a fixed amount of, of acceleration. 
I don't know if you guys have already learned it in, in physics. I think it's physics, yeah, in physics. But uh, uh, here I give out the formula, and uh, you guys can can implement it, and uh, just give some some random number for the velocity, or just use the number I give out here, and uh, try to calculate the uh, d. To try to write a program in your in your you know idle to calculate it where v0 equals 100, a equals 10, and the t equals 5. Try to calculate uh, what d is. And I'll give you guys some, uh, some time. And you guys, uh, and you guys can, can type out the, the results in the chat, paste back once you've done it. And then you are the first one. So let's wait for other guys. Now let me know if you guys have problem or difficulty doing this. Then we can go either go go back to discuss what hey, Jacqueline, are you done it? Have you done it? Um, from so far only, Elena has done it. Okay. Yeah, it's B0 is 100, and A is 10, and T is 5. Yeah, good. Can you guys give me what, uh, for example, uh, Jacqueline, can you give me what you, you are using to calculate this? Can you paste the code here? Yeah, good. Good, good. Let's let's try this. To see if you're doing good. Yeah, very good. That's the right answer. That's two hundred and the two twenty five. Has everyone done it? Is there anyone that uh, cannot get this answer?
Yeah, don't just copy paste the Arcanist solution. Uh, I'm copy pasting, but uh, yeah, I'll show. <laughs> but I, I'm the teacher. Okay. So are you guys all done it? Yeah, let's move on. If you have time to calculate, okay. Um, basically, the name I'm I'm I mentioned here is variable. Name and variable is the same thing. The variable is the is to 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 human being. The variable is a name to something, somewhere that you you play. For example, the velocity is a variable that we assign it to a hundred. You also can use v, of course. Yeah, in this case, because the, this formula is quite, it's quite, uh, it's already like well known for everyone. So you can use v zero as a variable name, and uh, a as acceleration, and a as a variable name as well, and a t as well, instead of the full, full English of the thing. But in most of the cases, you should use English as variable name, not to just uh, just some letters. Um, uh, let's put it this way: if you are solving a, you are solving a physics or mathematics, mathematics, there's a formula for it, and uh, there's a very like uh, well-known name for 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 each variable like single letter name for each variable in those formula, then you can use it. Otherwise, it's a, for example, it's application problem that the, you, you, you want to solve, then you, you should use the English name so that everyone knows what, 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 talking, what you're talking about. Because here, if you put V0, then because the formula is already written out or already written out and uh, it's quite fairly easy for people to find out v0 is the initial velocity so it's okay to use v0 here and a is the acceleration and t is the time so it's, it's okay to use single single letters here but in most of case you should use english yeah now so the the answer is this note that uh, the one divided by two is one divided by two here, and the times is the time, and the, the square is powered to two. This t powered by two. So you can use the, the priority of this is this. If you if you want to put brackets to make it more clear, it's this. It will calculate this first. And uh, this as one thing, and this first. And the answer, the numeric answer is 625. Now uh, we change it a little bit. We just changed one thing. And you guys should try it on your solution. I think everyone got your solution in, saved in the file, right? So now you guys, what I want, I want you guys to change one thing. I want to change one thing, one variable, just one variable. That uh, t, I want to change time from five to six, five to six, and uh, what you get now. Can you guys? Hey, yeah, you guys are quite quick, right? So one one thing that. Uh, one thing that the uh, yeah so one thing that the the advantage of what we can we when we use write out a program using variables is we we just need to change one if we change from time from five to six we just need to change one letter here instead of if we write it out in a calculator 
you will have to change here and change here two places. Later, we will learn functions which are more more easier to to understand. But uh, for now, you you change it here and you get a new answer. You you will get the answer new answer right away at the seven seven eighty. So that's the the power of of using a, a variable. Yeah. Now let's let's do some other examples. Okay, the other example, this one is more more of an application problem. It's not a, not a fixed uh, well-known physics formula. So suppose you have the task of painting the walls, and uh, the, these are twenty. There are twenty walls to paint, twenty rooms to paint. Painting only the walls, not the floors and ceilings. So each six feet wide, eight feet long, and ten feet tall. And then that's the dimension of the wall. Basically, using these three numbers, you can calculate the dimension of the wall. And uh, assume that uh, we use paint, that uh, we have five gallon cans available. And uh, I can. And a gallon of paint can cover 350 square feet of, of wall. And uh, we'll, we'll, I want you guys to write a program to calculate what's the total area that you need to paint in square feet based on these numbers. And they give you, if your variables, meaningful names. And uh, what's the number of cans needed in this case? For this one, you don't need to think about too hard for, if you guys can get the correct answer, it's fine, but if you get the fractional cans, it's also fine for now. We'll, we'll talk about how to, how to make it, uh, make it round, uh, round to an integer. So, okay, guys, so I'll give you some, like, several minutes to do it.
and uh, if you have you had the answers, Alina. Yeah, maybe one of you guys can you talk about uh, how you get these answers? What the what what's the way you're getting this? How how do you guys getting this? Mm, but the, the, remember that there's five gallons for each can, so but the, it's fine. I, I'm I think you guys are are calculating the number of gallons that you need it, right? Okay, maybe uh, Alex, can you talk about uh, how you get these numbers? 80s are definitely not right, I think. Um, because five gallons per can, if you have 16 gallons. Yeah. So if you have... Um, yeah, it's fine. It's the, then it's the gallons, not the cans. So yeah, the width is the six, and the long is eight, and tall is ten. So the tall will be used in both sides. There are basically two kind of walls in the in the room, right? One is the big wall, and the one is the smaller walls. The big wall will will have the tall, and the, the times by by the width and the length, whichever is longer. In this case, it's eight. So the smaller wall will have also the tall times by, by the width, which is smaller smaller width, it's six. So you have two kind of walls, the area of two kind of walls, which is big, one is big and one is small. Yeah, so Alex, your answer is right. Here is the, the area and the area, of one room is two times because there are two big big walls and two big small walls in each room. So for one room, it's two times big plus small, or two times big plus two times small. And uh, for the total area of twenty, you have twenty rooms, twenty times rooms. And the gallons is total divided by three hundred and fifty. So yes. That's the, the run right answer. Yeah, let's do it. Let's just copy paste this. Yes, I'm moving this forward faster. Let's see what do we get yet? Do we get yet? It's five hundred and five thousand six hundred and it's three point two. Now we get one thing that's a little bit weird is the three point two part because cans basically you it should be an integer. So how how do we fix this three point two cans? So well, what do you mean by three point two cans? It should be actually should be four, right? It should be four because the zero you can't buy zero point two can of 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 paint. You you need to buy four four cans of paint in order to to finish this job. So how how do you fix that? In order to in order to for for the program to print that four instead of three point five and three point two. Now we use a function that from the math module. In Python, there's a module called uh, module called math. 
that uh, contains a lot of mathematical function, very basic ones also, but uh, it will be very useful. You, what you do is, first thing you do is from math import the function you need to use. So let's do it here. Normally you should do it at the beginning of your program, program from math, import all the other function that you will need to use in this program. In this case, it's only cell. So from that, that is module, import the cell, cell is the function. From that, import the cell. And what this cell basically does, it takes the, the smallest uh, integer, the next integer that is larger or equal to this number. So in this case, it's four. For three to point two, it's four. So let's, let's try several different numbers first. You know, and if you, the cell of 3.2 is 4, and the cell of 4 is still 4, because it takes the, the next integer that is greater uh, or equal to it. So, so using this function, you can print out the right number, which is, which is 4 here. If you use this function here, and you run it, you'll get uh, 4,600 and four paint of, uh, four can of paint. Yeah. So that uh, instead of just divided directly, you use the cell function to get the, the next uh, integer of it. So that's well, what we also can call it the roundup of the thing, roundup of the number and the seal of the number. Remember the function to use is the seal. And uh, let's move on to next example. Yeah, suppose we wish to park a car for 30 days at a cost of well, $100 for each week and uh, 24 days, 20 extra days, that's less than a week. Then what intermediate calculation do we need? this thing for 31 days and uh, we want to calculate the cost of parking for 31 days 100 for a week and 24 a day for extra day i'll give you guys some some several minutes to do it write a program write a python program for it Hmm. Interesting. You guys have two different answers. Can you explain it to how how you guys did to get it? Yeah, it's uh, four hundred. Okay. Okay. And so you guys all get it. And uh, can you guys show me how you get it? Hey, you guys know how to use floor now. Yeah. yeah, that's the answer. If you first, you need to calculate the weeks and uh, the remaining days of it. Yeah, 
telling us that the right answer and here you need the floor another function called a floor it's quite similar to seal but uh, what it does is to run down so instead of run up so if we take floor of 3.2 you'll get three and if you take floor of three it will still got three it's the the largest number then the the last number the last integer that is smaller or equal than the than the number of the floor so that's called a floor function of it if we run it you should get the answer 460 yeah So the, the thing is number of weeks, and we calculate the weeks, and number of days remaining, it's that many, and the total cost is number of weeks times 100, and number of days times 20. So that's the two functions that we used in these two examples. One is for the largest integer that is less than or equal to and then the C, CL function, which is the smallest integer that's greater or equal to S. Yeah, we can try all these things, but uh, I guess some of you guys are already familiar with it. But uh, nevertheless, let's try floor and the CL of 1.9, which is you guys should uh, try try it if you guys are not uh, familiar with these functions yet. So at least that's what it does. And uh, now think about it. Um, maybe you there is a way to avoid these two functions in these two problems. The floor of 31 divided by 7. There's an integer division in Python that, uh, that, that gives you the, the integer division of, of two numbers and the, the, the same take the floor, uh, the same as the, you take floor of the division of the two numbers, which is slash slash. So the 31 divided by 7 is what? It's 4.42. But if I tell you to Use it the use the integer integer divide division, and uh, I want a quotient and a remainder. Then what you do is thirty one slash slash seven, and you get four. So four is the quotient of thirty one, the integer uh, divided by seven, the the integer quotient of the of the thing. So it's the same as the take the floor of the the float. So we uh, this single slash in computer in computer programming we call in Python we call it the floating division because it will give you a floating number which is a decimal number. Decimal number is not a, not a not a whole integer. If if it's, if the division is not the uh, you cannot divide the without any remainder. But this guy it will only give you integer. So it's 31 slash slash 7. That's the integer division of it. And how do you do a seal of a division? The seal of a division is the, is the divide, uh, divide, uh, dividend plus the divider minus 1. And then use this. And then use the slash slash into the integer division. So you can use integer division to replace replace floor and the cell for the for a quotient of two integers. You can use this. This is much faster than floor and cell. And in competitions, it's, it's mostly favorite the, the later form than the than the it's favor the the right hand side than the left hand side if you want take the take a take a integer quotient of two num two integer numbers. This is much faster 
then the right hand side is much faster than the left hand side. Sometimes they make uh, one solution pass or fail just because of this. And but the, there is one one caveat is it, it need to be larger than zero. The, the dividends need to be larger or equal than zero, and the divider need to be larger than zero. The A need to be larger or equal than zero, and B need to have, need to larger than zero for it to work. So the floor of A divided by B is basically A integer divided by B, the slash slash. And the ceiling of A divided by B is A plus B minus one, the integer divided by B. So these are the these are the integer division, how it's used to replace floor and the seal, which is much slower in in context programming. You guys should remember this by heart or take note and remember it by heart later. And now but there are also remainder if we calculate the integer division. Sometimes we want to get the remainder of the integer division. We get the quotient, which is, and uh, we can write it out in this form. It's A equals B times Q plus the remainder R. And then we also can get R in this using the modulo. Modulo operator is another operator that's uh, closely tied with integer division. So it's it's written as a percentage sign. So it's A modulo B. You can say it. You can pronounce it modulo. So it's A modulo B. Basically, it gives you the remainder of A divided by B. So if we try it, 31, what's the remainder of 31 divided by 7? 3, right? So you get 3. So the modulo here is a it's not exactly remainder, but uh, it's the remainder of, of two numbers if both are, both are positive numbers. So make sure that uh, you, uh, you, you make sure that A and B are positive when you're using these modules to calculate the remainder. So this is the integer division. Remember, I summarized it here. The integer division of it's slash slash in Python 3, and uh, the modulo is percentage. It's cal used to calculate the remainder for positive numbers. These two are much faster than the floor and the ceiling that we used before, so how are we going to replace them in the, in the, in this example? How are we going to replace it in parking cost? Can you guys try, try it? To replace floor with the uh, integer division, maybe that that's too easy, right? Okay, it's just a it's, it's just to replace the the floor thirty one divided by seven using the integer division here, and we can try it here. See if we get the get the same answer here. And we should give the same answer as. Get the same answer at the 460 here. Yeah, that's it. 460. And number of days remaining as well. Here we use this to calculate it, but uh, you can also use the use the the modulo function, which is the date modulo seven. You should get the same thing as well. So run it, and you get 460. You guys should uh, should change your solution and uh, see if it works for you, and uh, understand how these two works. Try it on different numbers and uh, get the uh, get an intrinsic like intuitive intuitive uh, view of like impression of how these things work. 31. And the total cost here, yeah, you can. You can see it is the thing is the thing as before.
Okay, so that's uh, the time is up. Now we have today, we are talking about the, the, the expressions and uh, the variables mainly. And uh, we, we started talking about some examples. And in next lesson, we'll continue talking more, more examples. And uh, I will start uh, talking about different types and also different types of, of uh, variables and uh, different types of data in Python and uh, strings, the list uh, and the tuples, how you, how you, how do you manipulate and uh, construct them? That's uh, the topic of the next lesson. And uh, yeah, that's it for today. And uh, don't forget to do the assignment. I will release it uh, right, right after the lesson, right after this course. And uh, see you next, see you guys next week. And uh, finish that. Uh, the notice the due date of the notice the due date of the assignment is 24 hours before the next lesson. So it's on Friday. Please submit the submit the assignment on Friday 2 p.m. before before two, so Friday 2 p.m. And uh, do you guys have any questions? Mm. No, there's no, I haven't uh, get, give out any assignments yet. Yeah, today is the first one, I think. Yeah. Today is the first one for this course, yeah, for this class. So just uh, remember to, to submit the assignment uh, before next Friday. I will give out uh, just uh, right after this course. There will be three three problems in this assignment, and uh, two of them two of them you should write a Python program, and uh, the only one you just uh, write some explanation of of what you how how do you think you explain how do you how do you it works explain how it works. Yeah. And uh, any uh, any other questions? Yeah, so see you guys next week and yeah, see you guys next week. Bye.